Hello, welcome to Minute Realms. My name is Stuart, and today's video is a painting tutorial for a dwarf slayer. Now, I'm going to be using this for Warhammer Fantasy and in the future Warhammer the Old World, but of course, you could use it in many different fantasy games. Now, this miniature is from Highlands Miniatures, and they do a lovely range of SDLs to download and print. They have a fantastic patron as well. I do recommend checking them out, and I have printed my whole dwarf army for this venture from them. Now, one of my favorite methods for painting is to use contrast or Army Painter Speed Paint or Express Color from Vallejo now as a glaze over a Zenithal pre-highlight as my base coat for, for miniatures. I then go on and highlight afterwards. So at the moment, you'll see that I've primed the miniature black to start with. Then a mixture of top down and about 45 degree angle with an airbrush. I'm adding white, giving a Zenithal highlight. Then I like to finish this off with a bit of a dry brush of white as well. And this really picks out some of those details. So when those glazes are added, what you end up with is a miniature that already looks like it's shaded and highlighted. I find this gives a little bit more depth and detail than just using contrast over a flat white or gray or cream prime. It gives you the opportunity to leave the miniature just at the glazed stages. And I believe that it gives you a slightly higher standard finish than over the flat prime colors. And those of you who wish to stop at that point, um, I will mention that in the video later on. So you can see where I finish those stages before I go on to do the later highlights. I'll pop a little link in now for one of my own videos that's all about zenithal priming and underpainting and how I use it with this method. So the first paint I'm going to use is Vallejo Express Color Dwarf Skin. And what I'm trying to do here is load the brush with, with plenty of paint and then move the paint around on the miniature. It takes a little bit longer to dry than Citadel Contrast, which means you've got a little bit of working time with this. And if you keep your brush moist, you're able to make sure that it doesn't settle too much on the flat surfaces and allow it to really kind of get into those crevices where you'll get that natural shadow. So with that fully dry, you'll see that there's already a really nice pleasing effect. And I think that, that Zenithal pre-highlight adds to that, just adds a little bit of the shadow. But we're going to deepen those colors now. So this is Vallejo Express Color Deep Purple. I'm just going to add a little bit of warmth with this to areas like on the elbows, around the nose, around the knees and the hands and feet. So I'm just thinning the Express Color down with a bit of water. You see on the palette there that it's spread from dark to light so I can adjust as I wish. And I'm just glazing it onto certain areas of the miniature and it's just giving it a little bit of warmth in certain areas and giving a little bit more tonal variation. So you can see there that that slightly warmer color has just added that extra tone. Then to finish it off, more express color, and this is gloomy violet. I'm just gonna use that to add a slightly cooler color in into the shadows. Now I have to thank Juan Hidalgo on his YouTube channel when he first tested the express colors, the first very first video that was on the internet for them. He used this combination of three colors to paint the skin on a blood bowl ogre and i thought it looked fantastic so i'm, I'm stealing that combination for this video now for those of you who are looking for the, the more basic tabletop side you can actually miss these these secondary stages out and just stick with the basic dwarf skin it will still look fantastic Now on to the first Citadel Color Contrast, and I'm using Skeleton Horde, and I'm gonna use it here for the little wraps that are at the top of his axes. And I'm also gonna use it on his loincloth as well. For the hair, I found that Citadel Contrast Griffhound Orange is a perfect color. It's quite bright and vibrant, but it's not fluorescent. So it's got some kind of natural look to it and it doesn't look too crazy. Now 
Next up, I'm using Contrast Garak Sewer. This is one of my favorite colors now to use for browns and leathers. And I'm using it on the handles of the axes, but then also for his belt. Now there's a little bit of cloth tucked in his belt. I plan on mixing the colors of those up over the course of the whole unit that I'm painting. But for this one, I'm using some red and I'm using contrast Blood Angels Red. Now there's a little leather pouch hanging off his belt as well and I'm using contrast Gore Grunt of Fur. I think this is a slightly darker brown to his hair, so it shouldn't shouldn't mix in with it too much. Um, but I wanted it to stand out and look different from the the material on the belt. Now for the first of the metallics, I'm using Necro Gold from Scale Color. This is one of my favourite colours in existence. Absolutely love this. You can use it for the little bands he has on his wrists, little bracelets, some of them have them on the ankles and they also do very very nicely for these little beard ties or whatever you want to call them and ringlets. I'm just adding touches of the same colour gold to the metal bracket holding the bag to his rope on the belt and then a little bit on the front of the leather bag as well. I don't know whether it would have been gold but I quite like the idea that this is sort of gold inlay impressed on the leather. Then for the final colour on the base layers I'm going to be using black metal from scale colour and this is on the axis. And here we are at our first jump off point that I talked about. So this is just the base layer of contrast stroke express color glazes over that pre-highlighted miniatures. And I think it gives you a really, really nice multi-tone effect already. And these will look great when based as part of the unit. Maybe you'll want to highlight the metallics, um, but you could quite easily go from there and these miniatures will look absolutely fantastic. But we're going to crack on. For the first of the highlights, I'm going to be using Model Color Dark Sand. I'm just going to be using this on the loincloth, on the rope and on the wraps on the tops of the axes. Being careful not to completely cover the previous layer, just to lighten it towards the edges slightly. And then for a further highlight, I'm using model color off white. And again, in the same area, so on the loincloth on the wraps, again, much, much finer. Thin lines, little marks here and there. It just really gives you that sort of multi-tonal effect and really makes it pop. Now using model color flat earth, this for the first highlight on the leather belt and on the leather handle grips of the axis. And the same method as before with the loincloth, so not completely covering the previous colour. Now using a 50-50 mix of flat earth and dark sand from model colour, I'm using this to add a further highlight to those leather areas. Now a 50-50 mix of flat earth and light brown. And this is perfect to do a subtle highlight on the leather pouch. Then model color light brown on its own for another final highlight on that leather pouch. But it's also the perfect color to highlight all of the orange hair. We'll just take my time here, trying to use the edge of the brush where possible, trying to highlight those raised areas, not completely covering the, the natural highlight that's already built in. So you get a multi-tone and definitely trying to avoid the darker recessed areas. So 
to Citadel Leia Evil Sun Scarlet is the perfect highlight for the contrast Blood Angels Red. And then an extra highlight of Wild Rider Red just on top of that. Now it's time to add the eyes, not everyone's favourite part of doing the miniature, nor mine really, but I'm using off-white from model colour for the, the whites of the eyes. Now the eye sockets here are barely dim and dark because I put lots of the dwarf flesh in there and a little bit of the, the purple as well. If you find that there's not a lot of shadow, it, it really helps to sometimes black out the eye before you apply the white. But I think there's enough natural shadow in there that when I place the white, it looks like it's recessed around the edges. For the pupils, I'm just using Game Air Black. It's, it's fairly thin, but you can paint it quite well with the brush and it gives you good control. The reason I've done that before highlighting the skin is because it's easier to tidy up if you make a mistake with the eye rather than completing the face and having it look perfect only to have to go back and redo it. Now to highlight those gold areas I'm using scale colour elven gold which is the perfect highlight to the necro gold. Now adding a subtle amount of a non oil shade to the, the metal areas of the dwarfs on the axis. I'm only putting this in the recessed areas, I'm not covering the whole thing. And this is the new formula, which doesn't pull as much. I prefer it for this kind of usage, maybe not as good if you're using it on bases or something. Then to highlight those metal areas, I'm using Game Air Silver. Again, this is often my go-to top highlight of silver. Just picking out whether the light would catch on the edges of the handles of the axes there. And I'll also go in and work on the tops of the axes where the light will shine most and on the edges. But I don't want to completely cover all the darker area. Again, we reach another jump off point here because that skin looks pretty good and I've highlighted everything else but the skin. So again, if you didn't want to go through what is probably the hardest part, you could leave your miniatures as they are here. However, if you're still with me and you want to do the next part, I'm using model color basic skin. Now I thin this quite heavily with a mixing medium. I find with water on this one, it becomes a little bit chalky, but it's much smoother with medium, but water can work. I'm just really, really subtly here, adding some fine highlights and then feathering out and blending in. But this is fairly thin to paint here, almost the consistency of milk and just trying to go less is more, a little bit at a time, because it's much easier to add more rather than take it off. The main key is to try and pick out where light might catch. So you're looking at knuckles and tops of noses and things like that, but not completely cover all of that lovely work that the, the three express colors glazers have done in producing that multi-tone. So you're really just making it pop rather than completely changing what you've done before. If you put too much paint on, you've gone too far and you kind of spoil your work. And now we're on to the finishing touches. So I'm using some Vallejo Earth texture here to texture out the base. This is this is dark earth. Um, this is my go-to. It's about 15 pounds a pot, I think, but you get so much more of it than you would do from a, say something like a Citadel Stirred and Mud. Um, slightly lower in texture, but it does just enough. I'm going fairly basic, simple bases on these. I've got a feeling that when the old world comes out, you never know, they might well change the base sizes. And I, if I'm rebasing this army and I spent absolutely hours or bought resin bases or something, I'd be pulling my hair out. So I'll just apply a thin layer of this. Now I'm adding some cat litter here as some rocks. These are untreated, unpainted at the moment, just super gluing them on. This is the Cat Sand brand. Now this stuff is quite porous, so when we paint it later, do expect it to um, absorb in. Obviously that's what it's designed to do. The less said about that, the better. 
Now, while that base is drying, I'm going to use some blood for the blood god on the axes themselves. I've added a little bit of water and I'm going to build this up slowly. I don't want to look like a 12 year old's done this with blood and gore everywhere. I wanted it to be subtle, but definitely used. And it is a fantasy miniature. This isn't a historical miniature, so you can maybe get away with a little bit more than you would on, on something else. Now the base texture is dry, I'm going to add a shade of Agrax Earthshade. Being careful to avoid the rocks here because I want to add a different colour for those. Now using Vallejo Express Colour Black Lotus, I'm actually painting on over the rocks. Now it's actually a rock as part of the model, um, which was still has that kind of grey zenithal pre-highlight, which I've done my best to keep clean. And this is quite a, a, a light um, a black colour. I'm almost bluish in tone, but it gives you a really nice, almost cartoony effect rock for him to stand on. And it works really nicely over this white cat litter. Now, as I said before, it does soak in a little bit, so you might need to go back and touch it up. I quite like the effect it gives when it soaks in, um, but it's um, really, really nice. You've not had to paint it beforehand, and it just gives something that stands out on the base a little bit. Now, rather than dry brush textured bases after the, the, sh the shade is dry, I like to brush in pigments. This is the light center. Again, I've talked about this on many videos before. I just think this gives a more realistic kind of military modeling kind of look to your bases rather than that kind of 1990s dry brushed sand effect. You know, it's just a personal preference, but I like to use this. Now, I'm not going to fix this. I'm going to blow the excess off. Um, it doesn't come off after that, it sticks in all the recesses and things, but just provides a bit of a dust filter, really. Add some tufts. And finish off with some Game Air Black on the base rim. I couldn't resist adding a little bit more blood for the Blood God on a rock and there's grass next to him. And there you are, all finished. And I think that's a pretty good example of how a very basic paint job to start with using glazes over a zenithal highlight really can give you a nice base to work from but the miniature looked pretty cool beforehand and I think rather than just using contrast or army paint or speed paint or express colour or any of the other paints like that directly over white I think using that zenithal pre-highlight method just really gives you a stronger base to work from in my opinion um, and, and does some of the work for you but I think he's probably out pretty cool and I'm, I'm quite happy with that as a standard for my army. I'll probably spend a little bit more time on the proper characters in my army. This is just a unit champion, but I won't go an awful lot more. Even for the general, I want to get the army on the table to, to game with. Um, so I'll, I'll spend a little bit more time, but that's got other extra details. I'm not going to spend hours and hours on a, on a gaming army, but I still think that it gives you pretty impressive results for a relatively quick paint job. And if you're doing this as a batch paint, you can you can do a unit of 20 in a, in a reasonable amount of time. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I do plan on doing some more painting tutorials for Warhammer Fantasy themed miniatures. I had loads of fun doing it. It's a bit of a journey. I'm getting back in with my son who's collecting orcs and goblins. And if you haven't seen my videos on that, I'll pop a link in to those videos now and you can see my video on 3D printing and the, my video on nostalgia and how I ended up painting Warhammer Fantasy miniatures again. And uh, if you are uh, like me, looking at returning back to it because of the old world, you may well enjoy watching those. There is a painting tutorial for a skeleton also made by Highlands Miniatures on the channel included in that as well. So if you, your flavour isn't dwarves and more undead, you may want to check that one out. But there are an awful lot more videos on the channel too. So have a little snoop around if you are new. If you've enjoyed the video, give us a like. It really, really helps. If you like what you see on the channel and you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you soon.